Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on Stargirl Season 2. And this is going to be my trailer breakdown of Episode 3 for this season, otherwise entitled, like the first two episodes, Summer School Chapter 3. But of course, let's watch the trailer and then we'll talk about it later. We need to find the shade. Wouldn't that be thrilling? Guess who's the newest superhero? Me. We won't let you hurt our town. Stay out of my way. So your last episode was the big Green Lantern episode, but it wasn't just that. We had uh, Jenny Lynn Hayden come in, properly develop the and like learn the Green Lantern powers, absorb the Green Lantern's energy. So it looks like she's not going to have to use that battery anymore. Yeah, so she's pretty much the Green Lantern, living and breathing. Uh, as well as the battery, but also the shade properly arrived in Blue Valley and made his presence known to Barbara. He's interested in what's uh, the wizard's magical collection that we saw at the end of last season, but also Pat figures out that he is the shade and is like, well, we got a problem on our hands, but it's not just that. The shade's not the only villainous force. Eclipso makes his presence known and we see him properly take his first victim in the form of Bobby Berman or Cindy's stepmother. Of course, Rebecca McNight was attacked by him, but we didn't see exactly what happened with her but we actually see what happened to bobby berman she got absorbed by eclipso in a pretty uh grotesque sort of gruesome and definitely uh just very harsh and painful way so uh, i definitely wouldn't want that happening to me but of course before we jump into the actual breakdown of the trailer we will quickly go over the synopsis or description for the episode as it does give us a bit more context but of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions about this, what we're looking forward to the most from this episode, any theories, anything like that, let me know. And of course, if you are new to the channel, and of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like and it would show support and excitement. After getting a taste of the superhero life, Mike pleads with Pat to let him join the team. Elsewhere, after seeking help from Thunderbolt, the JSA prepare for a confrontation with the Shade. But yeah, there is actually a decent amount to chat about and we will be including some stuff for the episode that's not included in the trailer. So there's a decent amount, of stuff, a decent amount of stuff to talk about from the trailer, as well as some stuff that's not in the trailer. So stick around. But in regards to the trailer, we start off the trailer, 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 by seeing the one and only Richard Swift, aka The Shade, on top of the clock tower, which of course did have that fight scene in the finale from last season between Icicle and Stargirl. And maybe The Shade is standing up there gloating on top of their due to that. I mean, who knows? You know, he obviously uh, sort of picked apart Jordan McKenna or Icicle's plan when he came into Blue Valley end of last season. So maybe, maybe that's what he's doing up there. But as we do hear Courtney say, we need to find the shade. And of course, Courtney was super excited or super duper excited last episode at the end when Pat told her there was a new villain in town to take down and the last remaining member of the ISA. So... She's excited then, but now it appears that she is in a serious Courtney mode, which of course we know is very serious. Now, speaking of the Shade, we do see him in Richard Swift mode. So I think the Shade is pretty much when he has a top hat on and he's speaking a bit more deeper. He's the Shade. Richard Swift is suave English or, or British, uh, you know, collector. That's, that's the Richard Swift mode. But he looks to be in the room that holds William Zarek, aka the Wizards Collection, which he, of course, was asking Barbara about last episode, wanting to buy it. Now, we are, of course, wondering what he is exactly after in that collection. Clearly, he doesn't want it all. He doesn't, he doesn't care about everything in there. He either wants something specific or a few things, but I'm assuming he just wants something specific within it, one thing. Now, Cindy Berman, aka, the, uh, AKA Shiv, found the Eclipso Diamond in this collection at the end of last season, so it makes you wonder if that is what the shade is after or is there something else in there that is of value or at least good use for the shade. If I had to put money on it, I would say he is after the diamond and it would be interesting to find out for what purposes. Is it to keep it away from potential hosts? Does he say, well, I don't want the Clipso out like that happened 50 years ago or whatever. Or is it for you know, more nefarious usage. Is he actually planning on using it on someone? Now, it's important to remember that the shade can lean into the gray area between hero and villain rather than just a straight up supervillain. So it would be a surprise if he had plans to unleash Eclipso just in general or on someone specific, but who knows? Maybe he just wants to get it out of the potential wrong hands. 
But um, yeah, we might get a tease as to what he's up to in this episode. But next up, the big introduction for this episode, and that is what is inside the mystery pink pen that we had last season. Now that was left for this season, just like the Green Lantern, and as we can see, Mike Dugan has it, and as he is claiming, it makes him the newest superhero in Blue Valley. So we have a new Green Lantern one day, and a pink pen wielding dude the next. Now, of course, the pink pen, I'm pretty sure was, is still in Courtney's room in that pen holder. I don't think it moved from there. So I'm not too sure how it gets into Mike's hands. Maybe he goes into Courtney's room to write something down. Maybe Courtney accidentally grabs it. I'm not too sure. Maybe she knocks it over and the dog brings it downstairs. I'm not too sure how Mike's going to get his hands on it because I'm pretty sure it's still in Courtney's room from memory, but I have to wait and see. Now, within this pink pen is the Thunderbolt Genie, who will be voiced by Jim Gaffigan. However, this episode will have some flashbacks by the sounds of it, as apparently we will be seeing Johnny Thunder, who was the last holder of the mysterious pink pen before it ended up in the JSA's headquarters on display like we saw in season one. So I wonder what those flashbacks could entail, but also it doesn't stop there in regards to Thunderbolt stuff. So Jakeem Williams, aka the future Jakeem Thunder, is also supposed to be showing up in this episode. Now, whether it's just a quick introduction scene or maybe a few good, you know, maybe a good few scenes with him is another question, but he should be the one that ends up with the pen properly as some at some point. Like in the comics, Mike never had the pen. Mike Dugan isn't a Thunderbolt wielder in the comics. They, they're doing that for the show. So maybe the Thunderbolt Jenny like rejects Mike after a while, or at least after Jakeem comes into the picture. That is a possibility. Or maybe Mike and Jakeem come across at the same time. And maybe it only works for Mike because Jakeem was around him at the time or something along those lines. Like that's a possibility maybe. But in regards to it rejecting Mike, as we know, Cindy has her eyes on Mike as a part of this new Injustice Unlimited group that she is building like we saw at the end of episode one. So maybe this is a big turning point for Mike. Like maybe it's, well, it's definitely not a good turning point. So maybe he gets rejected and he's vulnerable, whether it is to Eclipso or whether it's just to Cindy. I don't, I don't see Mike going, you know, oh, the Thunderbolt Jenny rejected me. Time to fight against my dad and my stepsister. I don't see that happening. So I'm assuming that he has filled a lot of anger. Maybe if, if, if he does get rejected by the Thunderbolt Genie and then Eclipso is able to tap into that. Maybe that's what happens there. Um, but then again, maybe the Mike stuff is for much later in the season. And this is, it's a, this is just a challenge that Mike has to face at this point if he does get rejected. We'll have to wait and see. Now, in regards to the Thunderbolt Genie itself, as we can see when Mike is talking to Courtney, and I think it's Yolanda when bragging about the pink pen, in the background behind him, you can see a bunch of like stop signs that are in a circle. And just after that in the trailer, you do see three guys scrambling while the stop signs come down around them. Now, as you would assume based off the name, the Thunderbolt Genie is a magic based character. And as you would expect, uh, pretty much does whatever the holder of the pen asks except you aren't limited to three wishes this time around. So how good's that? So I would assume these three dudes were being a pain in the ass towards Mike. So he put them in a holding pen made of stop signs. Um, I know if he just says like, make them stop, maybe that could be something. That's why the stop signs around him. I'm not just sure why it's specifically stop signs. Uh, I'll have to wait and see, I guess. But we also do see the genie flying around Pat's garage. And it wouldn't surprise me too much if we have some conversation and banter between the genie and Pat, because I'm sure it'll remember, it will remember Pat. I mean, why wouldn't it? So that'd be pretty funny, or it could be potentially funny if it, if it does happen. But to finish up the trailer, we do have the JSA approaching the Shade in his residence, telling him to not hurt their town, and him, you know, not really asking them politely to leave, more like forcing them via throwing them into walls with these powers. But one interesting thing in the trailer is that it appears, based off this shot here from what I can tell, that Mike tags along and is in the Shade's residence and uses a Thunderbolt pen around Shade or the Shade. Now, I wonder whether this could be the reason something goes wrong and the pen stops working for him, which then leads to Jakeem Williams taking over as the holder of the pen. You would have to think that something goes down where Mike maybe doesn't make the smartest decision, but ends up with him losing access to the pen. Maybe it's something that is the same as something, or it's on the same level maybe as something that Courtney did, but she didn't feel any repercussions uh, from it to the level that he might from whatever happens here. I am interested to see how it plays out because I think this is going to be a big, at least a, at least a big step in what happens with Mike this season if he is going to go down a darker path. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see it all play out. In regards to primary images, there are some for this episode. They're mostly just uh, the JSAs, I would assume, first encounter 
with the shade like we see in the trailer here. Um, nothing really much going on in regards to that. So, yeah, but I think they didn't really want to spoil much. I think, yeah, like the, the trailer really focuses on, you know, Thunderbolt stuff and then the shade stuff. And yeah, who knows if we get any Eclipse of stuff in a major way in this episode. Um, we might take a break from that for a couple of weeks. I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this episode or based off the trailer at least. What you're looking forward to the most. Any theories, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.